take a look at this reaction. Do you think it happens through SN1, SN2, E1, or E2? Up to now, we've been looking at a reactant and a set of conditions and asked to come up with a product, and we learned how to do that. But sometimes, your professor will give you a reactant, conditions, and the product, and ask you to come up with intermediates or the complete step-by-step -step mechanism. In fact, this question came from an exam where over 100 students failed to get full credit. What if you see something like this on your exam? How do you make sure you maximize the partial credit or even get it all correct? Let's take a look. The first thing we want to figure out is if this reaction happened as a substitution or elimination. We'll start with a four-part checklist, pretending we don't see the product to figure out what's going to take place, and then I'll show you a trick for using the product to come up with the reaction. You can find this entire series along with my substitution elimination practice quiz and cheat sheet by visiting my website, layaforsci.com slash substitution dash elimination, or check the link in the description. Looking at the four part checklist, we'll start by looking at the alkyl chain, specifically the carbon holding the leaving group to help us determine what kind of reaction can take place. Here I see an alcohol sitting on a secondary carbon. A secondary carbon can both form a carbocation and undergo a direct attack, so it doesn't tell me anything. All reactions can happen, SN1, SN2, E1 or E2. Next we look at the attacker. Typically you see it at the top of the reaction arrow, but H2SO4 is an acid catalyst. In fact, if you see H2SO4, immediately think dissociates in solution, gives me an H+. Plus. H plus is positive. It's not a nucleophile, it's not a base, it's not the attacker. But if all I have is ETOH, what is my attacker? This has to be a solvolysis reaction, where the solvent is both the solution and the attacker. What can I tell about ETOH? It's neutral. That means it's weak and it's not strong enough to do a direct attack. Instead, it has to wait for a carbocation to form. If the attacker is weak, we are looking at a one-type reaction. That means we rule out SN2 or E2 because ETOH is not strong enough for a direct attack. Which will it be, substitution or elimination? We don't know. They're both in competition, so let's hold that thought. Next, we have the solvent, which we already said is ETOH. We know that an alcohol is a polar protic solvent, which will be very happy for a one-type reaction because it can stabilize the intermediates, and it will also prefer elimination over substitution in a two-type reaction. We've already ruled out SN2E2, so it'll be SN1 or E1. And finally, we have the leaving group, which, wait a minute, OH coming off would be OH minus. That is an absolutely terrible leaving group. What do you do with a terrible leaving group? You bribe it. You bribe it with an acid catalyst to protonate, as we'll see in the mechanism, turning it into a good leaving group. So all we need to consider is bribe. Typically when you bribe it, it will leave on its own, giving you a carbocation intermediate, which once again tells us the SN1 or E1 route. If you were not given the product, your answer would be both substitution and elimination, based on the checklist, and they both can occur. However, in this reaction, we're actually given a product, and here's the trick. If the product has a pi bond, you know that it did elimination. If the product does not have a pi bond, elimination did not take place. For substitution, we're looking for the attacker sitting on the molecule. ETOH has an ethyl group, which is a two carbon chain with an alcohol. In an SN1 reaction, the hydrogen gets removed. So we're looking at the solvent minus one hydrogen sitting on the molecule. And here we have the solvent minus a hydrogen. That O with a two carbon chain is an OET telling us we substituted the initial alcohol for the OET group as an SN1 reaction. That's the first step. Next step is to figure out the mechanism. As we were looking at the replacement for substitution, you should have noticed that the position of reactivity changed on the molecule. We start with the leaving group on a secondary carbon away from the ring, and we end with a nucleophile attached at the tertiary carbon that is in the ring. We have to take this into account when we're doing the mechanism. So ask yourself, 
What changed in the course of going from React into product and how can I incorporate that in the mechanism? How do you move a group? How do you move reactivity from one carbon to another? If we have reactivity on a secondary carbon and the product has it on the tertiary carbon, we likely had a carbocation intermediate, yeah, SN1 reaction, and we had a carbocation rearrangement to form a more stable carbocation intermediate. So we're going to keep all of that in mind as we start out with a mechanism. One more thing that confuses students is the way the molecule is written. This carbon portion here looks nothing like the portion here, so it helps if you can number and recognize this is the same carbon in the reactant on the product. Coming off the ring, I have two carbons, one and two. Coming off the ring, I have the same two carbons. The only difference is that we flipped it upside down. The ethyl group has one, two, so we'll call this one prime and two prime. All of our carbons are accounted for. In working through the mechanism, it helps to keep an eye on your product so that you're always seeing the final destination. I'm going to work through it without the product, just in case it's not provided on your exam, you'll still understand how to go about it. The first step is to bribe our leaving group because right now, if I try to kick out OH-, it's going to come back. OH- is a very strong nucleophile or base, and it's a bad leaving group because it refuses to stay gone. I have H plus floating around in solution from the H2SO4 that dissociated. And so the lone pair of electrons on oxygen will reach for that hydrogen atom and form a new bond. This gives me an axonium intermediate because oxygen has three bonds and one lone pair for a formal charge of plus one. Positive oxygen is not happy and starts to pull on the electrons connecting it to carbon because it wants to make up for that positive charge and in doing so, eventually breaks off. This is exactly what we were looking for. When oxygen breaks off and takes along the electrons, we leave behind the deficient carbon as a carbocation, and somewhere in solution, we have a water molecule just floating around with the red lone pair that it had initially, and now the blue lone pair that it got from the bond between itself and carbon. It's happy, it's stable, and that's what makes it such a good leaving group, whereas OH- would have been negative and therefore unhappy and unstable. We won't focus on water anymore. Instead, we'll take a look at our carbocation intermediate. Here's a trick to recognize. Anytime you have a secondary carbocation near a tertiary carbon, you're going to have a hydride shift because the tertiary carbocation that you form is going to be more substituted and therefore more stable as explained in the carbocation tutorial link below. We'll show the hydrogen atom from the tertiary carbon grabbing its electrons and moving over to the secondary carbocation. Don't forget that the secondary carbocation already has one hydrogen atom, so this second gray hydrogen gives it a total of four bonds and therefore no carbocation. The tertiary carbon had four bonds, now has just three, and that means the positive charge moved over. Because the tertiary carbocation is more stable, it's happier and the reaction can proceed. We haven't looked at our ethanol till now, but we do have a lot of ETOH here written in line structure floating around in solution. In a positive acidic solution, a neutral oxygen is a weak but a decent nucleophile, and so it'll use its lone pair of electrons to attack the carbocation. These electrons now form a bond between oxygen to carbon, and let's not forget the rest of the chain. Oxygen now has three bonds, one lone pair for a formal charge of plus one, and to start making this molecule look like the product, I'm going to erase these two carbons and flip them upside down so that it looks exactly how the product should be. But you never want to end a mechanism with a positive charge if you can help it. So how do we get rid of the positive charge? We never attack the oxygen directly because oxygen with a positive charge is greedy and pulling on the electrons between itself and hydrogen. This makes hydrogen very partially positive and susceptible to attack by another nucleophile or base in solution. In this case, we consider it a base because a base grabs the acidic hydrogen. Different professors will finish the mechanism differently, so I'll show you both ways. You can use another molecule of ethanol in solution to grab that hydrogen atom, 
Or remember when we said that H plus came from H2SO4 that dissociated? If we look at the dissociation of H2SO4, some molecule in solution could even be ethanol, right? Hydrogen does not break away by itself. Something has to grab the hydrogen. If dissolved in water, it'll be H2O. If dissolved in alcohol, it's just the oxygen. This gives oxygen back its electrons. We get a conjugate acid in solution, which in this case is the OH2 plus lone pair positive charge. And the second product we get is an oxygen with an extra set of electrons, an extra lone pair for a formal charge of minus one. The simpler way to show this is simply H2SO4, reversible arrows because it's in equilibrium, giving me H plus and HSO4 minus. H plus is the same as saying H plus being carried by a solvent molecule. That's why I only used an H plus to start. But for this step, if you don't want to use a solvent molecule, some professors will actually show HSO4 minus reaching for that hydrogen atom. There are arguments for both. HSO4 minus is not as available, for example, as the ethanol because the solvent is the majority and the things dissolved in it tend to be in a smaller quantity. But if your professor shows it, either one is correct because something in the solution grabs the hydrogen and gives oxygen back its electrons. This gives me a final product where the oxygen is bound just to the ethyl group. We have our first lone pair of electrons. We have the second pair that collapsed from the bond between oxygen and hydrogen. It's neutral, it's happy, and we're done. If your professor wants side products, you can show plus H2SO4 or plus ETOH2 with a positive charge to show that ethanol grabbed the hydrogen from solution. For even more in substitution and elimination, make sure you go through the entire video series and then study the practice quiz and cheat sheet on my website, layerforsci.com slash substitution elimination.